Greetings, everyone. I just want to stop by and thank you so much for your commitment, your support of our Research Generosity Initiative. We have had a marvelous year. We have experienced the emergence of new programs and new experiences that includes our Christmas in Wonderland, that includes our Trunk or Treat event, and that even includes our Wiz adaptation. God is doing a marvelous thing as we explore new ways to reach God's people through worship and through program and through services. We thank you so much, therefore, for all that you're doing to support the initiative. We want to remind you a couple of things as we go forward this year. We want to remind you that this initiative has room for everyone. Every one of us matters. Every gift matters. Every penny matters. So we don't want you to feel ashamed or feel that your gift is too small. It is not. We want you to certainly be on board. We want 100% participation in the Research Generosity Initiative here at Hope United Methodist Church. We also invite you to live in a way where we are able to live as givers um, in God's kingdom. We want to make sure that we're living beneath God's provision, that we are living in such a way that our gift makes sense, that our efforts are in alignment with what we receive by way of income. We want to make sure that we are being equipped to live as disciples of Jesus Christ that takes giving seriously. And not just giving money, of course, but giving our time, giving our talents, our skill sets. This is the time that we as a congregation, certainly without any hesitation, want to deliberately rise up and resurge. Thank you again for all that you're doing. God is doing marvelous things in our midst. Come on, let us keep going and see what else God has in store. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Hope United Methodist Church on this Sunday morning. We welcome you, friends, guests, and even our members to an experience of amazing worship. We will begin momentarily, but in the meantime, we invite you to a time of prayer, a time of reflection, a time of quietly visiting with friends, perhaps. But whatever you do, may you be aware that you are very much in the presence of the Lord. Thank you again for your presence. It means so much to us. We'll see you shortly. Amen.
All right, let's give God praise for this day. We welcome you to, to Hope United Methodist Church. We also welcome our virtual audience, those who are joining us uh, virtually through Zoom call. We say good morning to you Zoomers and also to the YouTube and Facebook uh, live um, chat platforms. We say good morning and welcome to you. We thank you for your presence and we consider you to be a valuable part of our worship experience this day. This indeed is the day that God has made and we are excited to rejoice and to be glad in and on this Christmas Eve Sunday as well as the fourth Sunday in Advent. Yes, amen. Yeah. Now as we gather, we want to certainly invite our worshipers to make room and find um, come on in and find your places. We are excited to have all of you here. And while we invite you to come in, we also invite you to center yourselves and let us prepare uh, our hearts and our minds for continued blessing as we move through our worship experience today. Amen. Let us pray. God, we come from a rushed week, planning and organizing and orchestrating and slow us down, oh God, and slow the pace just a bit. And speak to us and meet us in this place where we meet you with all of what we are and what we bring today. Some of us are grieving and some of us battling anxiety and fears and worries. Take charge of our mind, God, and take charge of our thoughts. And remind us that you're still in control and that everything will be all right. So, Lord, we thank you for this place we call hope. We thank you for this room we call a sanctuary. We thank you for making our way to this place in the midst of fog and thick weather, but God, we thank you because you have cleared our vision in this moment. And so we come with all glory and honor because this was the night you changed the world. And we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. A uh, couple of things um, as we begin our time together. First, we did a little bit of practicing last week, so now we actually have the real performance today. As we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the tallies, Bar 74, 74, Barbara and I'll tally. Come on, show them some love, yes. Fantastic. We thank God for you, and we celebrate with you. What a wonderful day to get married, Christmas Eve. I love it. I love it. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, um, we will now um, also, Evelyn, our um, chief of staff, is not with us today. She's probably with us virtually, but this is her mother's 90th birthday, so she wanted to spend some time. 
All right. Shall we now stand as we sing our congregational hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, a great hymn of the church. If you are able, won't you stand and raise our voices with this announcement. Come forward with our Advent lighting. So I will be reading this last Sunday of Advent. When the angel Gabriel visited Mary, announcing God's plan for her to conceive and give birth to the Messiah, Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? And yet, only a few months later, Mary sings to Elizabeth, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. We, like Mary, hear God's call to be part of making God's dream 
for our salvation and flourishing a reality, and we question, how can this be? I am only, yet like Mary, the onlys that make us hesitate are gifts God can and will use as God's love transforms us into bearers of good news. We wait as people who have encountered divine love that disrupts the status quo and ushers us into abundant life marked by mutual love and peace that flows from the flourishing of all people. We light these candles as a sign of our shocking hope, our just peace, our fierce joy, and the love that transforms us. May love grow within us, transforming us into bold witnesses of God's salvation with our voices and our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Friends, can we give some love to our string quartet who will come now and share in music?
amen to that. Yes. I was all having all type of Bridgerton moments. I was going to get up there and do a little waltz. I was really enjoying myself. Well, welcome to Hope Church. My name is Karen Williams, and I'd like to take a few minutes to welcome our guests and to give you the latest on what's happening here at Hope Church. For starters, we'd love to welcome those of you who are joining us as a guest this morning. We know that there were a million churches that you could have gone to today, but you stopped here to worship with us. Are there any friends, visitors who are guests who are present with us today? Please raise your hand, stand up. We'd love to acknowledge you and welcome you here. Amen, amen. Amen. And if you're visiting virtually on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom, please won't you type in hello and let us know where you're coming from. Good morning, thank you, and it means so much to us that you are here today. Thank you for worshiping with us on behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. B. Kevin Smalls. We are delighted that you've chosen to worship here. Please feel free to provide your contact information. You can text visitor to 248 368-0204, or scan the QR code on the screen to receive our electronic guest forms. Hey, baby. To scan the QR code, take out your phone, open your camera, and point it to the screen. Your camera will recognize the QR code, and then you'll be able to click on the link to open the form. We do love you in the name of Jesus. Here at Hope, our mission is inviting people to experience a community inspired by Jesus' love. Please join me in saying our core values. Enjoying fellowship, engaging our youth, encouraging service, encompassing love, enlightening evangelism, empowering social justice. Thank you so much. Hope family, we are grateful that you have received these announcements. For more information on Bible study, Hope events in our weekly calendar, please visit our website at www.hopeumc.org. You can also receive updates by email or phone. Sign up for these alerts by texting CONTACT to 248-368-0204 or scanning the QR code on the screen. Do y'all know next week is the end of the year? I know, it's like it's already here. It's kind of hard to believe that. But there's no denying that here at Hope we have been so blessed. That's why we're planning to have a celebration, a service of celebration on December 31st. So join us for worship at 10 a.m. I hope we'll experience a jazz quartet and wait for it. I'm sorry, a jazz ensemble. And wait for it, we're going to have a celebration brunch right after church. We're going to be serving waffle and eggs. We'll also have egg, I'm sorry, waffle, chicken and waffle, excuse me. We'll also have eggs, fresh fruit, and a garden salad. I was looking at this, I didn't see bacon, but we'll get over that. There should be something for everyone. You're invited to stay after service for fellowship, and isn't that one of our core values? And by the way, this will be a casual dress Sunday. As we prepare to welcome a new year, let us prepare to care for our body, soul, and spirit with the annual Daniel Fast. This is a 21-day spiritual experience to help us become closer to God, seek answers to prayer, and grow in our love and acknowledgement of Christ. I've done the Daniel Fast quite a number of times. It's always an experience for me. Um, after 21 days, not am I only, I'm, I'm spiritually closer to God, but I'm also mentally clear. My, my, my mind is clear. My spirit is clear. My soul is clear. You'll be imagining what you do when you just give something up for 21 days in the name of God. Now, we do ask that you check with your doctor. If you can't give up food, there are other things that you can give up for the Daniel Fast. You can get off of social media for 21 days. Don't watch your soap operas for 21 days. Oh, no, 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 I can't do that. How about no gossiping for 21 days? Okay. <laughs> we will start the Daniel Fast on Monday, January the 15th. To learn more about Daniel Fast and begin preparation, check out the resources on our website. And like I said again, please, 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 before you start any fast, check with your doctor. The Martin Luther King Jr. Peace Walk is, among, is another event we look forward to supporting. And you might have guessed that it aligns with um, our value of encouraging social justice. 2024 marks the 39th year of the event in the Southfield community. The walk begins at Hope Church and ends at the Southfield Pavilion, where there will be a um, ceremony program and taste fest. Mark your calendars to join us on Monday, January 15th at 9 a.m. 
I have one more very important announcement. We're having fellowship hour today. Come on, yes. Stop by, grab a donut, a cup of cider, some cocoa or some coffee. But most of all, take some time to enjoy fellowship before leaving church. Hope family, we are grateful that you have received these announcements today. For more information on Bible study, hope events, or our weekly calendar, please again visit our website at www.hopeumc.org. You can also receive updates by email or phone. Sign up for these alerts by texting contact to 248 368 0204 or scanning the QR code on your screen. Thank you. morning, Hope Church. It's off to time. My name is Wim Glosson, and I'll be leading our off moment. Thank you for your generous gifts and offerings to our research, One Fund. If you are attending in person, please deposit your financial gift into the off box located in the lobby on the way out. Otherwise, there are three convenient methods to send support. One, you can text your gift to 248-965-5534. You want to give to my brother, my sister? Two, you can make your check. You can go to our website, hopeumc.org slash giving, and make your gift online. Or three, you can make your check to Hope UMC Care of Administration at 26275 Northwestern Highway, Southfield, Michigan, 48076. And now that you have chosen your method of giving, let us pray. Gracious, generous, and giving God, we offer our gifts to you. Knowing that the energy exerted in our giving is tiny compared to what we've expended finding the gifts for our families and friends. We also know that our giving is tiny in comparison to what you've given us, Jesus Christ. You have given us a glimpse of the gift you truly seek in our angels' con conversation with Mary. When told that she would give birth to our Savior, she simply said, yes, let it be according to your word. May that affirmation of faith and obedience be the gift we offer this day. Lord, Please also help us give with a heart of abundance and not one of scarcity, remembering, the, uh, remembering your abundant love for us. In Christ we pray, amen. Merry Christmas, church. God bless you today. Let's give God a hand praise for just getting us through, not only this week, but getting us here safely this morning. You know, there are times in the past where we've had to slush through a little snow, little bad roads, but God has made a way this morning in an amazing way. We're here because we know the birth of our Savior is near. Amen. I uh, just like to take this moment to bring a few notes of congregational care. And, um, you know, this, this, this season of, of the year, this time of the year, is never easy, you know, when you're, when you're experiencing a loss in the family or even think about uh, someone who's no longer here with you around the table at dinner time or whatever your celebration may be. So we, we ask that you continue to pray for the ones that, that we have uh, lifted up in the past for their, their grieving experiences at this moment and in this season. And then specifically, we just want to ask the congregation to lift up the brother of Dr. Noah Ferris Noel as he experiences the loss of his brother. Uh, the services will be held uh, next Saturday here at Hope. Family hour will be at 11. Service will be at noon. 
I ask you to continue to lift up uh, Brother Noel and his wife, Reverend Karen Noel, as they experience this loss during this time of the year. Also, we'd like to continue prayers for the Manuel family, who I know are here today, and their, the loss of, of uh, Kevin's mom, and uh, Nelvin Page, who earlier this more month lost her sister. And as mentioned previously, the Coleman family, as they experienced the loss of Murdoch Coleman, our wonderful, wonderful member, the celebration of life for Brother Coleman have, has been tentatively set for January 13th. So further details will be shared with the congregation as we receive them. Also like you to continue to pray for our brother Eddie Allen as his fight, his fight of, 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 of health and healing continues, dear God. We ask that you continue to, to lift up his family. It, it's a tough time. It is truly a tough time. And we also ask, I, I, I got a phone call yesterday evening as I was, uh, as we were celebrating our, the, the birthday of our granddaughter who turned three yesterday. And um, during that, that celebration, I got a call from a, a Hope member who obviously has been missing lately, but I didn't say anything. You know, I knew there must be a reason. She called me to let me know that she has been experiencing months of health issues that cannot be diagnosed. And this is not just a, on a personal level, this is not just a Hope member, but this is a friend of mine who I've known over 60 years. And it was, it was kind of disturbing to understand that, that she's been going through this and not, you know, not letting me know, but not letting the church know as well. And there are others who are experiencing long-term illness situations. So we want you to lift them up in prayer. Some of them are on our prayer list, but some of them are not. And that's their own wish. So we ask that you, excuse me, continue to lift up those who continue to not only uh, offer God their, their healing prayers, but want, want to understand that God is with them no matter how long it takes, no matter how, how extreme the, the illness may be. We know, and this church knows, that God is with us. Amen? <clears throat> um, and once again, we just want to lift up um, you know, the long-term illnesses, and I don't want to mention the person's name last night, but I will mention this name because we've mentioned her before, is Norma Jones. She continues to fight the good fight. She continues to lift up God in every breath that she has, and her family is surrounding her with amazing grace. So we want you to continue to pray for our sister Norma. And um, just a praise report, um, obviously, that... Uh, Pastor has lifted up the 74th anniversary of uh, Barbara and, and uh, Al Talley. But I want you to understand that within those 70 years, and this with this lately, Al Talley is an example of God's healing power. He is an example of what God can do when we truly depend on him. No matter what the doctors say, and no matter what, uh, you know, some of the caregivers may, may say, he is an example. And there are other examples within these pews. And I see you, and I'm not going to call your name. But I really know that God is a healing God. Amen. So at this time, <clears throat> knowing that, knowing that, let us take this time to go to prayer. The altar is open for those who would like to come forth and understand that God is with them today. Not just because of it's a Sunday, but it's a special Sunday. This is Christmas Eve. This is Anticipation Sunday. So we ask right now, if you're able and if you're willing, to please come forth for our altar call. call. You, know, you know, God <clears throat> has a way of doing the impossible. 
we do serve an, a miraculous God, the one who, who shows us miracles from time to time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. And I ask all those who are in our virtual sanctuary, find that comfort position wherever you are, in your homes, in your cars, uh, in a friend's home. It doesn't make a difference where you are because God is with you. And we know as a healing church and as a praying church, God is with each and every one of us. Amen. So let us go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we humbly approach this time set aside for prayer as your children, as a body of believers dwelling in this worship space today, resting in your shadow. You, Lord, oh yes, have provided us with a time of reflection that we can hold on to, a time of expressive love that only comes from you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for inviting us into that sacred place, that secret place that continues to offer a peaceful, prayerful landing area of life-giving assurance, dear God. God, as we take this time faithfully anticipating the birthday celebration of our Savior, we just want to say again, thank you. Thank you for the miraculous story that we as believers hold on to this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your gift of hope and love. Thank you, Father, for that amazing light that was seen by a few on that night long ago. And God, that same light that has proven to shine on all of us day to day and eternally lights our path through some tough times, times some tough days, some not so good days, but also gives us hope to overcome and deliver that Holy Spirit-guided victory through it all, dear God. As your servants, Lord, how can we not hold on to what you have shown us through our walk of faith? When we need you, yes, you are there. When we say hallelujah to your name, Father, you, God, decided to honor us with the gift of Jesus the Christ. You, Father, yes, knew what this sinful world needed, so you provided it with a birth like one that was and never will be repeated. Help us, Lord, help us today. Help us to honor the miracle as the season is set aside for just that. We call it Christian Christmas, but you, God, call it your gift to the world. As we stand in prayer this morning, let us not take this season, this time for granted because there are so many that need to understand and receive the message of the soon coming King, dear God. There is peace in his presence. Let the world honor his peaceful presence. There is love in his presence, Father. Let the world receive this love message. There is a light that shines eternally for all of us to share with those in need, God. Let us proclaim this Sunday morning, this Christmas Eve, that a change is on the way just because, just because, just because the birth of the Son of God is known and celebrated. Amen. And as we walk in anticipation, God, let us humbly honor the anointed messenger we call pastor. Give him the voice of proclamation that will serve your kingdom with a prophetic light for all to hear. How many ways can we give our gratitude of praise only to proclaim out loud, thank you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for giving us this platform of prayer to share your peace, your love, your light, so we can move tomorrow morning with voices of faith declaring our Savior is here. Our Savior is here. Hallelujah, Christmas morning. Our Savior is here. And it is his name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you all.
scripture is coming from Luke second chapter verses 1 through 4 I'll be reading from the new revised standard version updated edition in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered this was the first registration and was taken while Aquinas was governor of Syria all went there all went to their own towns to be registered Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, who angels greet with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch a this, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels see. Son of Mary, who 
continues the second chapter of Luke lays it out for us Karen read the first four verses let's pick up some of that reading he went to be registered in this verse 5 with Mary so whom to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people to you. That is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. God, we thank you for your entrance into our experience to show us the way. And now, O oh God, open our hearts and our minds that we might receive your words. And may they be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, every plan that God has initiated, every single plan that God has initiated, always has a thief who wants to attack it. There's always something somewhere wanting to interrupt what God is doing. For example, Jesus could not even come into the world without chaos and confusion. For example, it was actually at the very beginning, because when God does things, it's hard sometimes for us to interpret what God is doing and to feel what God is doing. So needless to say, it's kind of strange that a betrothed woman who was not yet married is already pregnant in a very small village and how embarrassing this was to Joseph. Not only Joseph, but to Mary's family, perhaps, to the whole community. This is not done. In those days, there were very serious orders that families followed. So can you imagine the weight of gossip, potential gossip and chaos that surrounded the entrance of Christ into the world. And God had to intervene through angelic messaging. Hold on, Joseph. Slow your roll. Calm down. Relax. Mary hasn't done anything wrong. She is carrying the seed of God. And all will be well. You're not just getting... A son, Joseph, basically, you're, you're getting a savior. A savior. Second thing, they actually get to Bethlehem, which was a 60-mile trek, walking, driving. That could easily be an hour. So walking, it was a whole day. And you can barely imagine what it's like on a very slow-moving animal plus someone who's pregnant, who is ready to deliver at any moment, but to follow the law and sign up for uh, the census. They made their way to Bethlehem, and because it was crowded, there's ironically no room for Jesus to be born. Out of all the folks that found a place, Jesus did not have one. And so he is born in a manger, a place they were able to find and stumble upon. And at that night, the plan still didn't stop. And I want to just kind of let you know that you are always going to have someone or some Grinch that would try to steal your Christmas. And if they're not trying to steal your Christmas, you're trying to steal your joy, your peace, your hope, your love. Some of us 
have joy, hope, peace, and love as unopened envelopes because our focus is on the people who's trying to intrude or on the movement, because it's not always people, on the movement that is trying to intrude on the things that we consider to be ours. Many of us aren't even, if you've heard the term, well, I'm not feeling the Christmas spirit. I just want you to know just because you're not feeling it doesn't mean it's not there. It doesn't mean that it's absent. And the Christmas spirit, let me define what that is. It is the spirit of God interrupting creation, disrupting the plan, and bringing in his son that we might be saved, that we can be saved, and that we will be saved. So my hope and my prayer is that we kind of figure out how to get our Christmas groove back. And honestly, Christmas and any spirit related to it is basically affected by how you move all year. You, you really, how Christmas, how Christmas lands depends on how we get through the whole year. And sometimes those nightmares that we have are results of how we think during the day. And if we get our thinking right and our spirit right and our conversation with God right, it alters everything in terms of our approach. So we're no longer panicking when something happens that's not according to plan. We're no longer flipping out when things go a certain way that we did not uh, sanction. We're no longer losing our minds because it's not looking like what we thought it would. We trust wholly and solely in God who will bring God's plan to fruition. And so part of that plan is to know that God wants to prosper us. And I know we think prospering is related to material things. But prospering is really related to a peace of mind. Prospering is related to a, a clean and pure spirit. Prospering is related to you knowing that your Redeemer lives. And God already has plans for you and me. And what I love about this, Jeremiah lets us know, these are plans to prosper us, but not to harm us. And sometimes it feels like our harm is taking over the element of prosper, prosperity. And you need to know how to be blessed. You need to know how to hold a rose with a stem that has thorns. It's part of the picture. It's part of the plan. Yes, you got the promotion, but the people you leading are driving you insane. It's part of the process. It's part of the plan. Yes, you wanted to be a mother and a father. And three and four o'clock in the morning, that baby has no care that you got to be at work in three hours. Yes, you wanted to be a, a mother and a father. And, and finally, that teenager is not responding to you the way you responded to your mother and your father. And the tactics that they used somehow are not working on your kids. With every blessing comes a challenge. And part of the struggle with celebrating Christmas is we mad and upset that we get blessings that have challenges to them. You wanted the home ownership. You did. You did. And you decided that it was something you could manage. But when that leak roofs, that roof leaks on Christmas Eve, <laughs> and when things go down right before Christmas, and you had everything stacked up, and all of a sudden, you have to make adjustments. Yeah. You wanted the relationship. You wanted it. You didn't take into consideration that sometimes 
you have to pull back and listen more than you speak. And sometimes you have to evaluate whether I did it wrong or whether I need to grow in this particular area. You thought it was all fun and games until you had to grow and stretch to become a mature person because all relationships require individual maturity. It's hard to get a blessing and a struggle and a challenge that comes along with it. And sometimes the Grinch, and I don't know what that Grinch is, but sometimes the Grinch comes with the threat to just rob us of our Christmas and of our joy. I remember last year, I decided that I was going to get a live tree, and I wanted it to be big and robust. It was our first Christmas in the parsonage. I brought that tree in the house safely, thanks be to God. And I, I found a way to put that tree in a stand, and I went downstairs to get the decorations, and I came upstairs, and that tree was on the floor. <laughs> and I put the tree right back up. And I went in the kitchen and I came back and that tree was on the floor. After having several words with that tree and letting that tree know what the deal was, I finally got to decorate it and the tree was so big, the decorations weren't enough and it made the tree look bare. And if you think I was going back out there and getting some more decorations for that tree, you had another thing coming and our tree looked horrible. It really did. It looked horrible. And this year, I had pride. I think, I think last week I picked up the last pride from that tree last year. But this year I had great pride in marching down in that basement and getting that five-foot tree, the artificial one, the artificial tree and loading it up with lights and bulbs, and it is a beautiful tree. Because I had to learn that just because it's large and voluminous and extravagant doesn't mean that it's a blessing. So here are a couple of things I'm going to send you on your way with. It's easy because in order for a theft to happen, you have to have the right situation. The theft has to have a right situation, like a door unlocked, right situation, like really a really dark place to enter with no one noticing. And of course, these days, people go right in in the middle of the day. Have to have the right kind of scenario, maybe a window, or maybe noticing when you're not there, a right scenario. And the Grinch who comes to us also observes the right scenario for us. There are situations that make it easy for theft of our love, joy, peace, and hope. One situation is when we refuse to reconcile the past with the present. When we refuse to reconcile the past with the present. And friends, I want you to know it is easy to think about the past because you've been through it. You went through it. You've mastered it. It's easy to think about the past because it's back there and you are looking at it from a view of going through it. But if you're honest with yourself, when you were actually there in the past, it wasn't always that good. It wasn't always that great. So there are two things we get stuck with the past. One is when we have a rough past and we have post-traumatic uh, trauma syndrome, if you will, a traumatic response to our past, PTSD. When we have something like that, when we went through something really traumatic, sometimes, believe it or not, as much as we would like it to go away, we still hold on to that pain. And we still nurse that sorrow. And we still cultivate our victimization within ourselves. We really act like we haven't been healed and blessed and freed at all. We have a companionship with some of our hard days and with some of our difficult experiences in the past, and we hold on to them like they're a gifted package. 
And when those things happen, it's easy for the Grinch to steal your Christmas because all you could think about was how bad you were and how dumb you were and how stupid you were and how foolish you were and how uninformed you were. And you tell yourself this every day. This has nothing to do with Christmas. This is a whole spiritual change you need. Then the other thing is, there are times in past, the past was amazing. It was awesome and celebratory and everything felt just absolutely wonderful. And things today in comparison don't seem to match the past. The people who helped make it aren't here anymore. The places where we experience that aren't here anymore. And sometimes we bring our own right situation for theft because we're in a new place, but we're attached to an old one and the two don't go together. It's what I'm calling an inability to, inability to reconcile the past and the present. And what God is coming to us this night to say, I'm bringing a new day to you. I am bringing a new world order to you. I am bringing a new purpose and a new destiny. I am bringing a new path for you to walk upon. And with that comes new experiences and new friends. With that comes new opportunities. But you got to leave the past behind. Otherwise, it will cripple you and it will delay what I'm trying to bring you. If you don't want the Grinch to steal your Christmas. If you're going to give him anything, give him the past and let him have fun with that. But you have a future. And I want you to, I don't want you to say it out loud. I don't want you to say it in your mind. I have a future. I don't care how old or young you might be. You might even be married for 74 years. There's still some loving to experience. There's some joy to walk into. There's some happiness that God is not done and God is not finished. And God is still finding a way to bless us every single day. But if you're not careful, you won't see it. You won't taste it. You won't recognize it. Because as far as you're concerned, the only thing you're worried about is what happened yesterday. And yesterday is not going to buy you one thing for today and tomorrow. I dare you this Christmas to open up the first gift of newness, new opportunities. You get to reset. You get to stop saying things like I was stupid and I'm dumb. I'm a new creation now. I've learned some things. I've experienced some failures. I I have been through some storms. I've walked through fire. I swam through, I have climbed mountains and I know that my Redeemer lives. I am a story that has still been written. I'm a story that's still been written. The other thing, the other perfect scenario is it's time to recognize that things and people change. Don't be so mad because things outside of you have changed. Things and people change. And some of us refuse to go along with the process. But people change. Things change. And so do you. Do you know we're living in a day now where some men, for example, and I'm not making any judgment. I'm just making some points for the clarity of this message. But there's some men who nowadays, they don't take their hats off in a building. Maybe it's a new thing coming along. I sometimes scroll down social media, maybe five or six pages before I get repulsed, because some of the things that I hear, and I'm not being old fashioned and judgmental, but some of the things that I hear young women talking about? I would have never heard that growing up. Some of the things and the way young men talk would have never heard. Some of the things that you do, honestly, I am mad that you're doing it, but it need to be in your house and not mine. (laughs) 
I don't need to see everything. Well, we want to show everybody everything, what we do when we get up in the morning, how we make up our bed, how we clean down our counters, how we go to the gym, how we drive our cars. Who cares? That's your life. However, to be honest with you, it's bigger than smalls. It's a whole new movement, and I'm not going to spend my time trying to reverse every single body in terms of how they think, how they talk, and how they live. I'm going to try to be a light in the midst of darkness. I recognize that things and people change, even with my own children. I could buy the same brand of lemonade for three months, and all of a sudden, they don't like it no more. I don't get it. I don't understand it. We could order pizza from the same pizzeria for a year. In the year and the first day, they don't like it and they don't want any more of it. I got to recognize things change. People change. People used to be nice. They ain't nice no more. People who used to be mean are really nice now. What's happening? Because let me tell you, and let me be honest, when you've had some road mileage in this life thing, a couple of things it may or may not do. Number one, it may in, give you a lack of humility because you've gone through some things and you've been successful and you think that's all because of you. And you don't have the humility. Or you've been some, through some things and you banged your head up in the wall and you used to think really more of yourself than you should and something happened where you realize that if it had not been for God in your space, if it had not been God helping you organize, if it had not been God helping you pull things together, if it had not been God giving you the words to say at the right moment, if it had not been God directing you to the opportunities and the people that you might thrive, you know not where you would be, and that is humility. It's not me, it's all God. That's the kind of change we want to live into. And lastly, nobody can steal your Christmas when you recognize who you are. I am redeemed. I have been purchased. I have been sought after. Jesus came all the way from heaven through Bethlehem to Washington, D.C. just to let me know that I am somebody. Jesus came and found you, did he not, just to let you know that you will make it, you will thrive, you will stand, you will succeed, you will get through, and when you walk through the water, he will walk through you, with you, and when you walk through the fire, he will walk through that fire with you, and when you go through the storm, he will be a shelter over you. That is who I am. I am redeemed, and because as I'm redeemed, I can do all things who Christ who gives me strength. Because I am redeemed, I can walk into my new day without worrying about it being snatched from me. Because I am redeemed, he will fix my problems. And I will not be afraid. And I will not be intimidated. And I will not be pushed around. And I can talk to my Grinch. And I can pull him up by the collar and let him know that for Christ I live. And because he lives, I shall go on and I shall move on. That is what my Christmas is all about. And so I say to you, Merry Christmas. Thanks be to God for joy. Thanks be to God for hope. Thanks be to God for love. And let the music continue and let the dance dance on and let the party begin. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, 
I don't want nothing else stolen from me. And whatever has been stolen and robbed, God will replenish. I know he will. You, you've seen these clips of people trying to steal the packages off the porch. That happens spiritually. And, and you know what? Every package, thank you, God, every package that's been stolen off of our porches spiritually, God has brought four or five back. God has brought four or five back. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I just want to tell you, I'm not, I'm not unaware that this living thing is hard. Sickness and illness and loss of employment and managing families and keeping it together. Friends, it's hard. It's hard. If you want to think that you can come in here and I'm going to tell you it's a bowl of chairs, you got the wrong church. I'm going to be honest with you. It's hard. But it's impossible without God. It's impossible. If we're truthful, some of us have been hit with some stuff this year. Been hit with some stuff. Now think about it. Some folks are planning funerals and some folks won't be able to be with children and some folks are moving into nursing homes and some folks have been rushed to the hospital this week and I know as a pastor, I, I... think about all these things but God is still God God is still God and what that really means is the stuff that happens in my life that I don't get and then the stuff that happens in the world that I don't understand like somebody who's willing to bomb and kill 20,000 people, children and women, I'll never get that. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. But there's still a God. And God has all the knowledge. And I understand that sometimes I have to move when I don't get it. And when I don't understand it, I still have to move. And I still have to stand. When God makes decisions that don't fit right with me, I still got to stand. Still got to move. So this Christmas, I'm I'm wondering, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? I want you to get this relationship down because it will come when you're not even aware and lift you up and move you forward. This is the beauty of God. Uh, The amazing thing about God is how God does so many things silently. (laughs) Just silently. You sick and and before you realize it, you, you healed? You ain't hear it. Did you hear your healing? It just, it just, he, he moves silently. Silently. God ain't always loud about stuff. And I just, I want you to know that this relationship is at work in you. He is trying to connect with you. That's what Christmas is about. It's the major connection. It's the night of connection. He wants to connect with you. So I'm going to ask you, 
Is your house in order? Now, I'm not asking about the dishes in the sink. Are you sure? If you walk out this door and walk into another one that leads to eternity, are you, are you, you good? If we like to say, are you good? Are you good? We just want to open the doors to the church. This is the day to make one step. That's all we, that's all this is. This is one step. One step. And God will make ten. And your life will be changed instantly. Don't we read that in 1 Corinthians? In the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. And we think that's about death. It's about life too. I want you to come and say yes to God and let God say yes to you. The doors of Christ are open. And those of you who are joining us virtually, it's the same invitation. We've come here just for this moment. Leave with a new badge. Leave with a new ID. Leave with a new purpose. Leave your suitcases here. And your burdens and your challenges and all that other stuff you trying to fix and you trying to strategize, God is saying, I'm not concerned with that now. I want you to come and embrace the new. You've been battling long enough. You've been fighting long enough. You've been struggling long enough. You've been wrestling long enough. Now is the time for unto you this day, a child is given. And they tell me he's wonderful. He's a wonderful counselor. He's almighty father. He is the prince of peace. Now behold the lamb and come meet him here. The doors of the church are open. Grab our hand and catch this new life. Still open, just a few seconds. Let you think about it. But don't leave the same way you came in. Life's too short. Is there one? So I'm standing right here in 
the midst of my tears and I claim you to be the Lamb of God. Even when I broke, broke your heart. Born into sin that I may live again, the precious Lamb of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Lamb, the precious Lamb of God. Why, why you love me so, Lord, I shall never know the precious the Christ candle before we enter into the world again and as we light this candle let us remember that even with delay the light comes Shall we stand for the benediction? And this day, um, we want to remind you that we are having fellowship in the hall, in the fellowship hall. And after our benediction, this time we will be singing Silent Night as our doxology. And I want to wish each and every one of you the merriest of Christmases. And may God richly, richly bless you. And now, May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make the Lord's face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And you're going out and then you're coming in and you're lying down and then you're rising up and your labor and in your leisure and your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before him in that day which there is no sunset and no dawning in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen
We want to remind you that this initiative has room for everyone. Every one of us matters. Every gift matters. Every penny matters. So we don't want you to feel ashamed or feel that your gift is too small. It is not. We want you to certainly be on board. We want 100% participation in the Research Generosity Initiative here at Hope United Methodist Church. We also invite you to live in a way where we are able to live as givers um, in God's kingdom. We want to make sure that we're living beneath God's provision, that we are living in such a way that our gift makes sense, that our efforts are in alignment with what we receive by way of income. We want to make sure that we are being equipped to live as disciples of Jesus Christ that takes giving seriously. And not just giving money, of course, but giving our time, giving our talents, our skill sets. This is the time that we as a congregation, certainly without any hesitation, want to deliberately rise up and resurge. Thank you again for all that you're doing. God is doing marvelous things in our midst. Come on, let us keep going and see what else God has in store.